Thank you so much. Wow, it is an incredible feeling to be here 21 years after I graduated sixth grade. So many uh, wonderful faces. Thank you to all the teachers here. It's really great to see you guys all again. Um, gosh, I feel like it was yesterday, swinging outside on those monkey bars with my Velcro shoes on, <laughs> hanging out in the library in that panoramic window, reading about Max, his creature, his island full of creatures and where the wild things are. At ACDS, learning was fun. It was exciting, and it opened your eyes to the world around you and the infinite opportunities to explore it. Nowhere was this more true for me than in Doc O's lab. We visited on our tour today. Thank you, Jack, for an awesome tour. And looking around the lab, the memories just started pouring in. Did you know, for example, that if you have a container full of two materials, like sand and stones, and you shake it up, the sand will displace all those stones and they'll come magically rising up to the top? Well, if you were in Doc O's class, you do. You should try it at home, it's, it's really cool. And who else but Daco could have emblazoned into such young minds the structure of atoms and their electrons traveling in finite orbits around the nucleus? Such an abstract concept. But when each atom is a person, and each orbit is a necklace that person is wearing, and each of those electrons a bead in that necklace, then science comes to life. Explore your world, understand it, study it, dream about it, and let yourself be captivated by it. That's what you taught me here. So that's what I went out and did. One August afternoon, 10 years after I left SCDS, I was a junior in college and I hopped aboard a steamship, sailed for 100 days on a study abroad journey spanning five continents and 11 countries. What a beautiful world indeed. Standing upon the ship's highest deck, I could see the horizon in all directions, no land for days on end. At night, Every constellation and every star I'd ever seen in my life were all there, but this time surrounded by thousands, if not millions, I'd never seen before. We explored majestic temples in rural India. We hiked emerald green terrace mountainsides in southern Vietnam and looked down from the edge of the breathtaking cliffs at the Cape of Good Hope. But for all the beauty in this world around me, it was the people that were most unforgettable. So gracious, so giving, so wholeheartedly selfless. Rarely was language common between us, but we shared smiles almost universally. Enchanted by the wonderful and fascinating people I had met, I found myself summoning some of the lessons ingrained in my earliest years here at this school. Be curious, probe deeper, and try to understand just a little bit more. But as I looked closer, I became painfully aware that so many of the amazing and diverse people that I had met throughout the world were tragically similar and their persistent struggle with poverty and lack of adequate health care. It was heartbreaking to see firsthand the vast need for medical and surgical care that globally goes unmet. And so I spent the last few years doing my best to learn what can be done about it. So my search took me first to Uganda as a first year medical student some years ago now, where for three months I studied mechanisms to equalize the distribution of antiretroviral HIV medications in war-torn regions of the country and then to Papua New Guinea, where I joined one of my heroes, a local Washington trauma surgeon, Dr. Lou Zirkel, to help realize his lifelong vision for a world where all trauma patients throughout the globe are treated equally, each with the highest quality care. So we teamed up with local surgeons to educate them in utilizing a new, a new type of surgical equipment designed for, specifically for resource-limited settings. Our patients, who would have normally been bed-bound in a leg cast for three months in the hospital, typically the breadwinners of their family, were walking in crutches in two days and back home in a week. The program continues there today, self-sufficient, run entirely by the local surgeons who bravely carry on the tradition. The model's been a fantastic success, and through the help of countless other volunteer surgeons who too have traveled with Dr. Zirkel, there are now 300 sites like ours in 56 countries with over 110,000 patients cared for. Experiences like these continue to inspire me and to push me further to learn how much can be done to give everyone an opportunity to receive the sort of care that here, for many of us, has simply always been available. Ultimately, my own passion within medicine has led me to the field of facial plastic and reconstructive surgery, because for me, there's just no greater reward than the satisfaction of offering a patient an opportunity to repair a disfiguring or debilitating injury, a birth defect, or a cleft palate gone untreated. 
I've been fortunate to meet a group of other surgeons who share in this common interest. And together as a team, we've traveled to Quetzaltenango, Guatemala, each fall for the last three years to help care for the wonderful people of this community who have suffered from burns, malformations, or facial injuries never, ever attended to. We're able to treat over 60 patients each year and always leave wishing we could do more. But over a lifetime, we hope we can make a real and lasting difference. So really, I'm just one SCDS alum trying to do my part. But I think I speak for all SCDS alums when I say that I feel tremendously fortunate to have been taught my earliest lessons by the energetic, passionate, and truly dedicated teachers here at this school. I owe it to all of you, the wonderful teachers here, to do something for others, just as you have done for me. This award is for you, and I can't thank you enough.